you know, I look at all this shit. Not shit, sorry. But you produced yeah. all the. I the call ca- it shit. You do? Yeah, sure. Good for you. It's your shit, man. Yeah. You produced Cable Guy, Anchor Man, Talladega Nights, Super Bad, Pineapple Express, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek Bridesmaids, The Big Sick. And first of all, I think, you know, you're 54 years old. Mm-hmm. You're five years older than me, and I feel like a complete <laughs> fucking failure. <laughs> I love all the shit you've done. But I look 20 years older than you. No, you don't. If you shave, you have gray hair. That's it. That's the only <laughs> fucking difference. But one thing, you know, people talk about is freaks and geeks. And just briefly, you know, I've read inter- interviews where you talk about, I knew it was going to get canceled. I knew every week. Was that is that true? Did you really feel like from the get go? Oh yeah, this is going to get canceled. And why? What was the studio's complaints? Why did you feel that this wasn't going to make it? Well, we made it at a time when there was no head of NBC, so the head of programming left, and suddenly there was a more business oriented guy who was above him who got to make all the decisions. And because he wasn't some programming guy who felt the need to ruin your process. He just loved the script and we said, hey, we want these people in it. And he went, great. Usually, as you know, the the network will screw with your casting choices because it's the only place that they really can mess with your show. So when you go, I'd like this person to be the lead, they're like, bring me four choices. (laughs) Yes. Which is the dumbest part of all of television is this moment where you debate the network. So if you create a show and you say, I want this person as the lead. If you lose that fight, you've already ruined your show. Your show is done. You you might as well not shoot it. It's it's all about that. And so we've had good and bad experiences with that. But in this experience, he just greenlit everything. We shoot the pilot. Uh, Jake Kasdan came in to direct it. We had Bill Pope as the cinematographer who, who did like The Matrix. Yeah. Just one of the greats of all time. And Paul Feig was just so tuned into what he wanted to do with that type of show. And then they hired a head of programming. And very quickly, someone just said, he doesn't like it. Just he, didn't get it. He doesn't get it. They said he went to private school. He, he, he's not feeling it. And so Jesus. from the very beginning, we knew we were in trouble. And, you know, you can see it in the time slot and the marketing and the fact that we would be on for a week and off for two weeks and back for two weeks and off for three weeks. So there was no rhythm to create a relationship with the audience. And we felt like our days were numbered. And then he took me out to lunch and he said, can your characters have more victories? Because it was a melancholy (laughs) show about getting your ass kicked and and the solace you take from your family and your friends when you're really having a hard time. (laughs) What did you say? No, that's not what this show's about. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and I had to. And I, I was young enough to not know that that it's bad to be honest. <laughs> I didn't really know how to work those That's relationships. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the thing that I did to give him a victory was there was an episode where Bill is in gym class and there's a high pop that comes up to him and he catches it and he goes crazy celebrating. And then he doesn't realize that it's not the final out and everyone is scoring and tagging <laughs> up. You know, that was as close as a victory. Right. Uh, and so it did turbocharge the show because, you know, when you think you might get canceled at any second, you know, you use all your good ideas, nothing saved for season two and three. Right. And so it became a, a bit compressed. Well, yeah. And you shot the finale. We shot the finale like three episodes before <laughs> the end of the season. Which is crazy. We didn't want it to end. Abruptly. On nothing. Unsettled, right. And so I remember Paul and I were in Las Vegas. That's hilarious. I flew to Vegas to see Rodney Dangerfield with Adam. And By the way, that's my favorite comedian of all time. Yeah. He, so he, yeah, he's the one that we, we, you know, we loved. I had seen him as a kid and, and we got to hang out with him. It was a magic night. But I bumped into Feig who happened to also be in Vegas. And we were just talking about it. And we, uh, I was like, man, let's just do the final episode. He hadn't directed. I, I felt I felt bad, but he was the best writer on the show. It was such a vision for him. I didn't think that he could keep up with the writing if he was directing. And so I, I hadn't let him direct because I just felt that that was so important. Right. And so I said, just write and direct the last episode. And then we'll shoot it in the middle of the season. So if we get canceled, we'll have a finale. And 
in, in our conversations in Vegas, we were like, what would happen to Lindsay? And we thought, I think she'd become a deadhead. Like that seems <laughs> to be the middle between the right. burnouts and the mathletes would be the deadhead. And then Paul wrote and directed the most incredible finale. It's it's really remarkable. Then I felt guilty that he hadn't directed more episodes, but I think the reason why the whole show is good is because uh, he hadn't. 